Hi guys, I'm Rogue Squid. In this guide I'm going to talk about a powerful, charge shredding CQB shotgun, the Saiga 12. The Saiga 12 is a semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun chambered in 12 by 70 mm rounds, more on that later. It can be purchased from Jaeger at loyalty level 2 for 26,000 rubles. Alternatively, it can be purchased from the flea market or commonly found on scavs. The weapon's base stats are 257 vertical recoil and 57 ergo. The Saiga 12 is semi-automatic, however its fire rate is mostly dependent on how rapidly you can click your mouse. Unlike the other 12 gauge shotguns currently in EFT, the Saiga is fed by detachable mags, making reloading much faster than other hand loaded weapons such as the MP153. The Saiga 12 mags come in three flavours, the standard 5 rounder, the spicy 3 slot 10 rounder, and the extra hot 2x2 two two slot 20 round power mag. This shotgun excels at close range CQB fights where its relatively short barrel length makes fighting around cover through narrow corridors and doorways easy, where a weapon with a full length barrel might struggle. That said, the weapon's still capable of accurately hitting targets at longer ranges, up to 150 meters with slug rounds and an optic, if that's your playstyle. As always, choosing suitable ammunition is a major consideration. In the 12x70mm calibre, there are 16 different ammo types. These fall into two main categories, buckshot and slug rounds. Of the five types of buckshot, the two I use most are 12x70mm 8.5mm buck, which is available from Jaeger at loyalty level 2 for 66 rubles per round, up to 60 rounds per reset. Magnum Buck has 8 pellets per round and does 50 damage per pellet, causing up to 400 damage per shot. It has very low penetration though, so aim for the face or legs if possible. It will truly ravage anything below the waist. Bit like your mum. The effective distance of this round is inside 50 meters, but the closer you are to the target, the better really. The drawback to Magnum Buck is the plus 115 to recoil stat, making a muzzle break a really good idea. Magnum Buck can be crafted in the hideout at workbench level 1 for 1 classic matches and 1 blue kite gunpowder for 120 rounds. 12x70mm flechette is another type of buckshot which is sold by Jaeger at loyalty level 3 after completing the quest The Huntsman Path Forest Cleaning. Flechette has 8 pellets per round and deals 25 damage per pellet for up to a total of 200 damage per shot. But where this round excels is its penetration. At 31 pen, it can penetrate class 3 armor reliably and deals very heavy damage to class 4 armor. It just shreds armor durability. So at close range, Flechette is really powerful, especially against armored targets. Flechette can be crafted at workbench level 2 for one Leatherman multi-tool, one metal cutting scissors, one metal fuel tank, preferably empty, and four blue kite gunpowders for 60 rounds total. And finally, AP-20 is an armor penetrating slug round. It has 37 pen, deals 164 flesh damage and 65 armor damage per round. This makes AP-20 very powerful against anything up to class 4 armor. AP-20 isn't sold by the traders however, it must be either found in raid or crafted at workbench level 3 using one long flat screwdriver, one nippers, one red hawk gunpowder and one damaged hard drive for a total of 80 rounds. Modding the Saiga 12 comes down mainly to two things. The muzzle brake you, the, or muzzle attachment you choose or the and the handguard that you choose. Now the stock handguard is it's basic it only gives you ergonomics. The muzzle brake options you have, however, can change the recoil pattern of the weapon quite a lot. The GKO2 muzzle brake is the most basic, but it's available from the Jaeger level 2 and it's pretty cheap, so it's not bad at all. The Monster Claw is the best muzzle brake out of, uh, out of the two. Um, 
It provides really good recoil reduction, but it's only available later on once you've completed a fair few quests. Then you've got the Hexagon 12K Suppressor, which is a decent recoil reduction. It's also a bit of a uh, bit of a heavy hit to the ergonomics, though. Uh, it does. It is nearly silent, however, so that's you know in its in its favour. You also have the option of the Salvo 12 uh, suppressor, which is very heavy, pretty expensive, but it does give pretty good bonuses to recoil. So overall, not bad. Next, handguard options. So as we said, the Standard handguard gives nine ergonomics, which is not bad, but it does limit our options, obviously. Uh, we have the short rail handguard like this, which has a rail on top for a sight, uh, two rails on either side for flashlights, and then a, a rail underneath for a, uh, for, a, for a grip of some sort. Now, this one only gives a small reduction to recoil, 3%. Uh, but its ergonomics are not great. Plus two is is not not great. The long rail version, which just extends this rail on top, has very similar stats: minus three recoil, plus two ergo. Uh, but this allows us to add where is it? A range of optics on top, up to and including like sniper scopes, even if you've uh, if you put a mount on there. Um, so this is an option too if you plan on running a longer range Saiga. Um, next option is the Bravo 18. Now the Bravo is half decent. It still gives that minus three recoil, but it's slightly higher in ergo terms. It's also got way more options in its you know flashlights uh, kind of territory. Meaning you can run some pretty funny meme builds with this thing, having like four cliches on the side or something to truly obliterate your opponent's eyeballs. Uh, it doesn't have the option to have a a properly long range sight on top, so realistically you're limited to kilometer sight type sights. Uh, and finally, there's the Type Three Four Zero handguard. I'm not a fan of this thing, if I'm honest, because it does have really really good ergo, but the recoil isn't great, and as far as I'm aware, you can't mount a uh, any type of grip on it. So you're kind of stuck with that 10 ergo and minus 2 recoil. Um, you can mount a flashlight on the side with um, the with the rails um, like that. You can stick flashlights on the underside, which is is not bad. But again, giving you the option of lots of uh, lots of flashlights. But I would rather have the option of a of a foregrip of some sort. So I tend not to bother with this thing. It also is quite expensive, so I tend not to bother, like I say. Um, other than that, it does have a side mount, obviously, so you can mount all of the standard AK type sights on the sides, including a PSO scope if you plan on running that. You can use the full range of AK uh, pistol grips. And finally, you can add a charging handle, but the main main final thing is going to be the stock you choose. You can use the standard stock and then put a butt pad on it. Everyone who watches this channel knows I'm a fan of that thing. Um, but you can also use either the PT lock with, not that one, with either the PT3 or PT1. Both good options. There's also the RPK tube uh, with a wide range of stocks or you can also use the AKS AKTS AK74 tube which has slightly better recoil stats uh, and again a wide range of different stock options Oh, someone's doing the till. It's definitely a player. Ooh. 
pretty sure I got him there. Magnum buck to the face. Sorry, buddy. Black my arm. <laughs> well, PPSH will do that, I guess. I was lucky he didn't hit me in the face. Ah, one for Silent Calibre, too. Forklift spawn. Let's uh, see if we can get a grenade kill. Send one of those around there. Quick painkiller. Alright, let's go. Still movement on the left. Grenade number two. That's a terrible grenade. Good shots, though. That's definitely a player. Hmm. Don't think he's got much. Ah, squirrel gun. Someone's doing Tarkov shoot part three, I think. Oh. See, that could be really close, or... The sound is, like, really deceptive at the moment. Let's have a look out this way. Oh. Okay. Is he coming down the corridor? He's just gone quiet. There he is. <laughs> just saw him. Yeah, he's got a Kedder or something. Kedder B, maybe? Yeah, now, now he's holding an almost impossible angle. Um, hmm. I've got the right-hand side peak here, but I don't really want to... Uh, ...have that fight. Let's go for the flank. Not now, Scout. It's taken quite a while for that flank. I doubt he's still here. I would have moved on by now. Okay, so dead scav on the floor. Can't hear much. Scav out in the open area. All my mags are packed. Just having a bit of a listen, but... Hmm. Oh, yep, he's still there. Okay, so we've exchanged places. Um, I wonder, can I bait him in? Gotcha. <laughs> well, the bait didn't work quite how it intended, but, you know. Another for Silent Calibre. What's he got, I wonder? Doesn't look like there's a second. Ah, yeah, Kedapi. <laughs> Really, the spawn I wanted, but well, if we push over, like to the other side of outskirts, we might find somebody. Speaking of which, 
That shot was pretty close by. Excuse me. Would you uh, make yourself available wherever you are? Oh, there he is. Wait for a clean shot. I missed. Come on. Come on. Hit him. Let's go for the push around the back. Could be hidden in a bush, maybe. Yeah, he was dead. I thought he was led prone for a sec. <laughs> this is risky, but... Oh, nice. <laughs> right. I'm keeping your stuff. I don't care you're a low level. If you're going to have a racist name, I'm going to keep your stuff. Alright. Are there any scabs by checkpoint? Any scabs. That's a filing cabinet. That means PMT or player scab. Was that guy... What was that guy doing? He was like... Well... Just in a world of his own, maybe. Maybe he doesn't have a headset on. I mean, he's wearing a headset in-game, so... Don't know. Don't know. He didn't have much. I'll take a squirrel gun. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found the guide helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.